Hello and welcome to Trapping Radio 2.0. Um, this is Jeff Dunlap, and uh, I'll be doing the podcast this week. And i uh, got quite a few different things I want to talk about. And first of all, I want to take care of our sponsors, uh, F&T, out of Alpena, Michigan. They have everything you need for hound hunting, uh, trapping, uh, predator calling, pretty much everything you need. Um, you can go on their website and check them out. They also have a new store, uh, so you can go, you know, if in the Alpine area or if you're heading to the Nationals, and what you can do is stop right in. It's an awesome store they have. Uh, there's nothing like I've ever seen before. Uh, so, you know, give them a call at www.fntpost.com. Um, also, we have Funkies. Uh, trap tags out of Alan Sayers out of Iowa. Uh, Alan's an awesome guy and you know he really uh, does a good job for trappers. He donates a lot for trappers and he's just an awesome guy. Um, you know if you want to deal with an awesome guy you know call Alan Sayers at uh, Funkies uh, you know or Hilltop. So you know, Alan owns both companies. Uh, you got Jeb Hollingsworth out of uh, Oklahoma, Hollingshead uh, out of Oklahoma, and uh, you know you can go under uh, you know Oki Trap Line Supplies, and you'll find Jeb. And uh, you know Jeb buys fur. Um, he does all kinds of uh, you know glands and meat and stuff like that. Uh, you know he's got all the weirdo stuff that you uh, definitely you know if you're looking for that Jeb's the guy, the go-to guy. Um, you know. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Dunlap Lures. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> Dunlap Lures. You know, appreciate everybody that uses uh, you know my products, and um, you know that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today is uh, about lures and bait companies, and you know why we made decisions that we made. Um, you know, and. Uh, I just really do appreciate everybody that uses Dunlap lures. Um, you know, uh, the trappers have always stuck by me and treated me great, and um, you know, using our products and you know, just friendly. And I, I really, really do feel uh, I owe the trapping community a lot. My my whole life, I I pretty much owe them. And uh, but um, you know, those those are our sponsors. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking for sponsors. Also, uh, you know, for the, you know, different things we're, we're doing, um, if you want to be a, sp- a sponsor on the, the, this show or uh, at the end of the show, uh, different things, you know, uh, get a hold of uh, me or Sarah and, you know, uh, we'll give you the pricing on it and everything else. So um, that being said, because uh, like Clint always said, you know, it's, uh, you know, not free to, you know, do the server and all that. Now I really know he's was telling 100% of the truth, you know, so, um, also, um, what I wanted to talk about, you know, to start with this week is, um, in case you hadn't heard, uh, me and Sarah bought, uh, Predator Control Group, um, and Trapping Radio and all that, uh, you know, uh, Clint wanted to have time to, you know, uh, just go trapping when he wanted to, not have to worry about it, be out of the public eye, um, not, you know, have to worry about sales and all that stuff. And, um, you know, and he has other interests, you know, like I like to go metal detecting. Am I going to quit trapping for it? No. But, you know, uh, Clint has a different stuff he wants to go conquer. And, you know, uh, I'm sure he'll be back at some point. Uh, he will be at the Fur Takers running his booth and, uh and it's a nationals, you know, both. So, um, you know, I look forward to hanging out with them. We're going, me and Sarah are going down there uh, to his and Cindy's house um, the 4th of July weekend. Going to hang out with him and Cindy. And Alan Sayers from Funkies is going to be there. Carl and Liz from Razorback Snares. Um, seems like somebody else is going to be there too, but uh, I don't remember who it was. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Sorry, whoever it was. I know we're going. That's what I'm. I can barely keep that straight. So, um, but you know, 
the thing is, is with us buying it, there was a lot of different things to look at with us buying Predator Control Group. And, you know, it's like, uh, you know, being behind the scenes and seeing, you know, knowing what uh, different people are doing. There's a lot of what goes on is, um, you know, s- you know, lures that are sold and, you know, and I'm not going to name no names. It ain't my business uh, to name their names because uh, they went a, a way that they they wanted to go. So I'm not going to out anybody because, um, I mean, uh, it's their business, you know, and I wouldn't like it if they did it, if I if they did it to me. So but there are businesses out there, uh, you know, lure companies and stuff that uh, people I see them on Facebook and stuff say, I use so-and-so's lures you know, because, uh, you know, so because of, I almost said the name, one of the names of so-and-so. He, does, he doesn't own that company. Uh, he hasn't owned it since like 92, you know. So, um, you know, that's the thing is, is, you know, with the, you have different ways of going it. People look at it where, um, thinking how to say it. People look at it as if if you don't think as the consumers that the original person is making it. Because, I mean, a lot of times, you know, if I'm buying a product, um, you know, off a a smaller company or something, I'm buying it off that that person. And, uh, you know, I like that person and I'm I'm using their product because I like them. I like what they have to say and stuff like that. You know, um, you know, try not to, you know, uh, buy off somebody I think is an asshole or treated me badly. Um, you know, sometimes you're forced to, but, um, you know, but, uh, so they, they, what they do is, is they, you know, um, you know, don't let it out that it was sold. Um, you know, and that's one option to go. Um, you know, you got another option to go where, you know, you come out and you, uh, you know, say exactly, you know, I, I, I bought this and that's, you know, like Scott Welch when he took over Blackie's, I mean, that's what Scott did, you know, um. You know, he, uh, you know, come out and said, you know, he was buying it and it was all public knowledge. And we could have went either way with this. You know, we could have had it where, um, you know, we had it, kept it a secret uh, or, and we discussed all of it. Um, but, um, you know, our thing is, is me and Sarah, uh, we, you know, our lives are pretty open with the trapping community and our friends. And, um, you know, uh, we, we didn't want to lie. We didn't want to lie to you, um, and, it, and it, just because you don't tell everything you know doesn't make you a liar. But if you if we felt if you go and buy products and you think that um, our hand wasn't involved, uh, you only thought Clint was, then that that would be a lie, and you know, we didn't want to do that. I mean, we did, basically didn't want to go out there and start living a lie. And, uh, you know, having this stuff on our table and, um, you know, um, have it where we, uh, you know, basically lying to, you know, our customers and friends and stuff that come up there. And, it, you know, and the thing is, is, you know, you only can keep a lie <laughs> for so long, you know, then what? I mean, in five years, all of a sudden, you know, we're still, you know, hauling the stuff around for Clint to his shows, so... You know, uh, we would have thought that honesty was the best policy, and, um, you know, that's the route we chose to, to do. Um, you know, I don't think uh, anybody is, I've had people tell me that, you know, uh, people think you're too corporate. You know what? I still make the, no matter how much we sell Dunlap lures, uh, I, I make them exactly the same uh, in, in uh, two and a half gallon batches and five gallon batches. That's what I make them all in. Um, because of the, I, I, if I try to, I've tried to take it bigger, uh, make bigger batches and it, it doesn't turn out right. And I end up throwing it away cause it ain't right. And I don't, I ain't putting nothing in a bottle that I don't, I wouldn't use myself. So, um, you know, I throw the ba- <laughs> a whole bucket full of stuff away, um, because it isn't, you know, or a bigger batch, you know, 20 gallons or something because, uh, it ain't right. Um, you know, and it'll, it'll blow up on people and, you know, so. Um, you know, I mean, so the thing is, is it's always going to be made the same, you know, is what I'm trying to say. And, you know, I mean, we went off the trapping, um, 
you know, uh, all over the United States this year, and we're going to continue to do that. That's why I love when I was in the hospital, and I thought, you know what? Um, I hope this wasn't my last first season. And I've told people this before, and a lot of you, uh, you know, people listen to Trap Radio, I've told. And, you know, I was laying there, and I thought I was, I really thought I was going to die. I, I told Jeff Haggerty, I said, I, I really hope that last season wasn't my last season to ever be able to trap. And, um, uh, you know, when I started feeling better, I thought, you know what? I want, there's a lot of places I want to go trap, a lot of the areas I want to go do this stuff in, and I'm going to make a commitment to myself that I, uh, I'm going to go all these places and trap everything I want to do. Um, and uh, that's exactly what I did. And, you know, that's the thing is, is um, yeah, we get a, a lot of opportunity to go do that stuff um, because of, you know, the business that we're in. And we're very blessed. And, um, you know, I ha have been my whole life. Um, you know, but, you know, th the thing is, is, uh, you know, it makes me laugh. Somebody tell me I'm, I'm corporate because, you know, I, you know, people think you're too corporate. You know, I mean, the thing is, I, I'm i about as far away from corporate as you could get. I mean, I quit uh, high school in the 10th grade to go out and be a, a professional trapper um, and coon hunter. And then the price dropped out of it. And then it was a struggle, you know, uh, on and off for a long time. Um, you know, we I caught bait and, uh, you know, I made my living off of the outdoors my entire life. That ain't corporate. So, you know. I know that most of you out there don't think that, uh, you know, but that was, you know, uh, what some people have said to me when, you know, I was, you know, think we were thinking about buying this. And because uh, there was one dealer that got a hold of me and said, uh, we had a guy call up here and he said, uh, you know, I'm not buying none of that Jeff Dunlap stuff anymore. And he says, uh, they said, well, why is that? And he says, uh, you know, because he come out with another line of lures that she traps. Uh, trying to get more business that wasn't had not you know i mean that that that's where people draw conclusions on stuff that is absolutely not true i didn't you know it's like uh there was nothing i needed to um you know do to get have more business or anything like that uh you know i mean sarah had trapped and you know uh, we got together and she wanted uh you know come out with a couple of her own lures and um, you know we had an awesome time building uh, you know the lure line yeah was I involved absolutely I was did I do it for more sales no I, I did it because uh, you know it was fun for me and Sarah to go do that together you know and uh, you know I mean they're they're great products and you know uh, you know I mean like I said we had a lot of fun coming out with them and uh, you know, I mean, that's Sarah's line. I mean, you know, and she knows how to make every single thing that, uh, you know, Dunlap Lures makes. You know, I mean, she if, if you get a bottle of Dunlap Lures, she put the label on it and put the stuff in it. I, may, I mix it up, Sarah bottles it. You know, like I was bottling some yesterday because she's, uh, you know, down to Iowa, you know, picking up some stuff from uh, Funkies. But, um, you know, that's, that's the thing is, is... Uh, you know, that wasn't ever why we come out with the she trap stuff. It was, uh, you know, because Sarah thought Sarah thought that uh, you know, like uh, you know, getting away from the lures part of it, you know, that uh, she could uh, you know get women involved uh, with trapping and stuff, and uh, she's done a really good job at that. You know, and not only women, um, you know, there's a, a lot of men you know, see her doing this stuff, and they, they're like, you know, she does it, I can do it, you know, it looks like fun, and uh, we hear that quite a bit, um, so, you know, that's the thing is, is, uh, you know, people draw conclusions on stuff that are not true, it's what they've made up their self, because, you know, you don't want to use my products, because, uh, you know, the, you know, somebody I care about a lot uh, wanted to come out with the lure line, and I was involved in it, fine, if, if that, if that, your only reason you're, was using my stuff before was because I didn't help the person I cared about, you know, then fine, don't use it. <laughs> but, you know, it seems pretty silly to me. Um, you know, I mean, but, you know, it's like buying uh, Predator Control Group. You know, did uh, we need Predator Control Group? Part of it was, is we needed it like a, you know, 
like I, I need a, a, a third eye, you know, um, you know, I mean, we're busy and, you know, got to get ahead. But we looked at the situation, thought, you know, if we reorganize this, work a little bit harder this time and get ahead on stuff, you know, we, we can do this, you know. So um, basically, um, basically, when you think that you are at your limit and can't do no more, um, Sarah will tell you that you can do more. So, <laughs> you know, so that's the thing is, um, there's multiple reasons why I wanted to, you know, why I initially uh, wanted to buy it was because of the fact of, like, uh, some people go out and they'll go on and do uh, trap, buy trapping instructions and uh, go to schools, go to the fur takers or, you know, Matt and Brian's school, uh, Chappie's school, you know, to New York, uh, Zagger school, Marjun school, um, you know, uh, Ed Schneider school. Uh, you know, there's all these schools that people go to. And, I mean, there's lots of uh, Kendall and uh, Lee and Leon's school and Denise's, you know. Um, you know, so that's the thing is there's all these schools and people go to them and, you know, you see the pictures and there's lots of people there, more at some than others. But, you know, I mean, there's still a lot of people go to them. Um, they're, they're going there to get knowledge, to be better trappers, to be able to be more effective because that's what they love. And one avid reason that I went and wanted to, when me and Sarah started talking about it, um, you know, buying Predator Control Group, um, was because of the fact that I love doing the lures and coming out with bases and knowing the knowledge, how to, you know, make uh, stuff that will bring the different types of animals to that set. And I love that. Um, so I, what I, I know what my dad knew, you know, not everything, but you know, a lot. And, um, I know what I know that I've learned my whole life. Um, and the thing is, is, you know, I've talked to other lure makers, um, you know, that were done, um, and talked to them about bases and, you know, this and this and this and what holds up. Um, you know, but I wanted to know what does Clint know? What has he learned? He's been doing this for his basically uh, whole adult life. He's been all over the country. He's made lures. He's been successful. One of the most successful lure makers around. I want to know what he knows. And uh, it, it, on that aspect, I'm it, it's worth every penny, you know, because um, you can put what Clint knows and what I know and what my dad knows and other stuff I picked up from other people. And you start putting, you know, the more knowledge you gather about something, um, the better you're going to be at it. And, uh, you know, and I mean, I, 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 I like being successful on making stuff that gets animals and different types of animals that come into stuff and, you know, get it to hold up longer than uh, just throwing some meat in a hole. You know, um, you know, I mean, it, you know, it was, like I said, it was worth every penny to get to know exactly what Clint knows and be able to call him up and ask him, you know, what about this? What about this? What did you find out? You know, um, you know, in a way, cause Clint's a good friend, but we never talked about, you know, making lures or what does he use or what do I use? You know I mean? The most is like, uh, he'd say, Hey, uh, you got any extra shellfish? Could you bring it to show for me? Cause I'm going to need some and you know, uh, so-and-so can't get it out. Uh, you know, so I'd, you know, take him some shellfish, but wouldn't ask him what he was putting it in. You know, there was, there's none of that. So, um, you know, I didn't know, you know, what he puts in cat collector. Um, and it's interesting to see his style of lure and bait making. Cause, cause I know mine, um, even Sarah's is, is way different, uh, on her thought process on it than, than mine. Um, you know, but it was interesting to see Clint, um, his process, uh, you know, and I called him up and I said, you're way different on this and this and this and this than I am. And he said, uh, so basically you're saying that, uh, uh, I've been wasting money for all these years. <laughs> I'm saying, no, I'm not saying that, you know, you're, you're misunderstanding. The processes both work. They're just radically different. And you'd think you just put stuff here and put, you know, uh, in a bottle and, you know, but it's more than that. 
and uh, you know I just wanted to have it where you know um, I just want to be the best I can be and sometimes you have to pay because you're going to pay either way every mistake you make in uh, the lures and baits or in life every lesson you learn is going to cost you uh, whether it's with you know learning it on your own or you're paying somebody and uh, you're you are going to pay um, but you know that's one of the reasons why I personally wanted to buy it um, you know to be uh, a better lure and bait maker to learn more and uh, like I say it was worth every penny and uh, I learned a lot still learning a lot and, uh, you know, that's the thing is, um, I, I personally never, ever sat and thought, you know what, uh, I can't make this stuff that, you know, Clint makes or whatever. You know, I sat there, we went through it, we made everything. And uh, I don't see, didn't see no, no problem with anything. Um, you know, it, it's identically to what Clint makes in, uh, you know, you just follow the directions. You know, um, you know, where you would run into problems if you had somebody where they, well, I eyeball this and dip this and put that in. And, you know, I just kind of, you know, pour it for like two seconds. And, you know, it has to be rode down, you know, and followed. And the lure formula is built that way, um, you know, and then you can do it identically how they did it. And, uh, you know, we get the essential oils in the same place. Uh, there's some stuff that... Uh, even I have to buy from other people, which I, was really weird to me, um, you know, that I didn't, never even had thought of. That's one of the things I, I you know, paid to learn is, uh, you know, this uh, different products you buy from this person or that person. And I'm around them pretty people at conventions all the time, didn't even know they even handled it. So, you know, on that aspect of the lure maker, it's invaluable. Um, you know, um, the other thing is, like I say, I just thought we could do a good job with running it. Um, and um, the other, th the one other thing is, I mean, uh, with full transparency, is uh, you know, tomorrow, like on Amazon, like on Amazon, they had traps, um, lures, baits, uh, snares, everything you ever need to go trapping on Amazon was sold on there. One day, a lot of people knew it was coming. I wasn't one of them people, but. Uh, they ban traps and stuff on there, and you know, uh, yeah, once in a while something will pop up. Uh, they they haven't picked up the algorithms or whatever they're looking for with traps, but you, they don't want them on there. Um, and the same thing could happen with the social media. It could happen with Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, where all trapping is gone one day when we wake up. And I don't want um, the social media where I can reach out to trappers and tell them what's going on and have them involved in my life and I'm involved in their life. Uh, I don't want to rely just on, on, uh, you know, on Facebook or YouTube or any of that. I wanted, you know, something to be able to reach out and talk to trappers. And that's, you know, the, the other thing is, is, uh, trapping radio, you know, and I didn't want that to end up with, uh, you know, uh, somebody else. Um, you know, so, that was a big, big, big thing. Um, you know, Clint did 500, almost 500 episodes. That's, that's a lot of talking. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, you know, do I, I think I got 500 episodes in me? Probably not. <laughs> Being honest, probably not. You know, Clint's a good talker. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a good talker. Uh, you know, I, um, and, um, and, uh, and, you know, I mean, that's, that's just me, you know, fidgety and, you know, just the way it is, you know, different, different personalities, but, uh, we do have a lot of big things in the works, you know, I mean, I talked to Jeff Haggerty and talked to Nick and they both had some great ideas and, uh, you know, and Sarah had, always has great ideas. Um, you know, so, you know, we're going to try and, uh, it's going to take a little time, but, you know, we got, uh, some Stuff we're working on that I think that uh, trappers are really going to like, and um, you know, and I would like to use this platform to you know reach out and get more people involved in trapping. Um, you know, not necessarily beaver trapping. Just kidding, but uh, you know the price comes up, everybody comes out of the woodwork. Up here, 
Um, you know, I, we go out and set traps and we might run into one or two other trappers, um, you know, out there trapping spring beaver. Cause that's one of my, one of my favorite things to do is spring beaver trap. Everything's just fresh and, you know, um, it, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, there isn't a, you know, we've run into one or two local guys, uh, you know, this year, you know, there was a bunch more out because, you know, beaver prices are up and, you know, they went out and everybody likes to spring beaver trap. It's, it's fun, you know, and, um, so, you know, the, basically there'll be, there'll, there'll, there'll be more next year and, uh, you know, and we, and we need all them people, um, out, you know, we need all the support we can get in, in this, in trapping. And, um, you know, that's why I'm hoping to use, like I say, use this platform to get more people in, you know, uh, involved. And uh, even if they're not going to do the fur trapping, if they're just going to do, uh, you know, catch possums and raccoons on their own property, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, you know, those are, you know, some of the big reasons that we that me and Sarah decided we wanted to buy Predator Control Group, and there was another reason. Um, you know, I thought it would be really cool uh, to be the owner of Predator Control Group. You know, my good friend owned it. I didn't want it to go to somebody else. Um, you know that uh, you know wouldn't love it and care about it. And uh, you know, one of the last things I uh, I I was. After we made the deal, I told Clint, I says, uh, you know, I, I'm really nervous about this. And he says, you know, about this, this, and this. And I said, no, I, said, I just don't want to, you know, do a bad job, you know, for you. You know, because I, I do. I feel uh, I own it. I can do whatever I want with it. Um, you know, as long as Sarah says it's okay. And, uh, <laughs> but I, uh, you know, the thing is, is, uh, I do care what Clint thinks. He's a dear friend, and um, you know I, I would never do nothing that would uh, make him him regret selling it to us. And uh, you know, and uh, basically wanted to, uh, like I say, I just wanted to. Uh, you know, I thought it'd be cool to own Predator Control Group and Trapping Radio and all this other stuff. So we did it. They, uh, on, in a down market, <laughs> we decided, hey, it'd be a great idea. Let's go out and take take our all our money, and <laughs> we're gonna buy Predator Control Group, another lure company. Uh, you know, but you know, you, you, you the opportunity that's you know comes, and you know you gotta you gotta either do it or don't do it. And uh, it's like I told Sarah, I said, you know. Uh, you know, the thing is, is if, uh, you know, you want to do something, you know, uh, you got to, you got to just jump out there and do it and, you know, worry about what's going to happen later. And, uh, that's basically what we both did is just jump out there. And, but, uh, she's a lot more brave on jumping out there than I am sometimes, you know, so, but she's, you know, she really got a good business head about her and. You know, it's really smart, and, you know, she's good with all that stuff. I, uh, you know, I can edit video, and that's about it. So, but I, uh, but if on this, uh, you know, like I say, we're going to get on the trapping radio. What we're going to do is we're going to try and get some really cool stuff um, on here. Um, you know, so people have been on here but mostly you know people uh that you know but haven't uh ha haven't been on here or any other podcast before and i know a lot of them people so i think i could get them on uh hopefully and um you know we're gonna try and do some cool stuff um you know if you have <coughs> happen to uh you know think something would be a, a good idea open to suggestions i uh you know definitely not the smartest guy in the room um, you know, we're coming up with, uh, ideas and stuff all the time. So, um, if you have any ideas about what we could do, I'm open to suggestions and, uh, you know, 
One thing we have done is uh, not just have it, if you're listening to this on the website, um, you know, it's also uh, on Spotify, it's on a bunch of different platforms, it's on uh, YouTube, um, I can't remember them all, Amazon Music, um, YouTube Music, you know, and it's on a, it's on a bunch of platforms. It's going to be on a bunch more. Um, so, you know, go and check it out on them. Um, you know, uh, yeah, they got a lot of a lot of different stuff you can uh, you know do you know as far as downloading it and stuff like that. So, um, it's really cool to be able to you know the way they have the stuff set up for podcasts these days and. Um, I can't do any of it. Sarah does it all. So Sarah's putting it up. <laughs> but she does a great job. She understands it all. and uh, Or if she doesn't, she takes hours and figures it out. Um, so I really appreciate her a lot. Um, last week on the, on the show, we had, uh, you know, Rick um, from uh, uh, Deep Ravine Fur in... Uh, it was nice to have Rick come in and uh, it'd be our, our first interview and, you know, talk about, you know, beaver prices and all that stuff. And uh, I, uh, everybody I talk to just says that, uh, you know, the you never know what's going to happen. I mean, tomorrow the price could drop out of it. Nothing's guaranteed in life. But, you know, I mean, that seems to be a really good market right now. And, uh, you know, I mean, we ended up averaging uh, $24 on grease beaver. Uh, if you don't know what grease beaver are, uh, grease beaver are just skinned and then frozen, the hides frozen. Um, you know, so we pull them out. And I, that was, uh, I think it was six of them, which Rick didn't even, you know, didn't, he didn't even throw them out. It was, um, you know, I threw them out. So, uh, you know, they were little, just little bitty beaver, you know, a little bit bigger than a muskrat, maybe two muskrats put together. So, you know, the, the, this, I mean, if they're itty bitty, they just, you know, I don't think they're worth nothing. So maybe they're, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I, I just, I, he treat, if somebody treats me good, I try to treat them good. And, uh, I didn't expect somebody to pay me for them little bitty things. And, uh. You know, so, you know, the, the thing is, uh, you know, if you want to go out there and, you know, catch something that's uh, worth something, I mean, a lot of times you can sell the carcasses, especially, you know, like on, uh, you know, the beavers in a lot of areas, um, you know, you can sell, you know, the muskrat carcasses. We buy tons of muskrat carcasses. Would have bought more muskrat carcasses, um, you know, and like this year, um, you know, uh, we we're paying uh, a, a dollar for the for a muskrat carcass that's where you just skin it throw it in a bag you, or you skin the height off take the, what's left and throw it in the bag and count it as one do that to the next one the next one the next one and then when you got 10 in a bag you tie it off and you got ten dollars um you know guts all tail head if you want the head i told them they could have the head you know so um you know they're there, there's money and all that. I had one guy get a hold of me and say, uh, you know, that was early on when rat prices were, you know, right in the shitter. And um, he, he says, I told him a dollar on the carcasses. He said, uh, I can't sell them for that. You know, um, you know, I, I want a, a dollar and a half. And I'm like, I can buy, for a dollar and a half, I can go out and buy rats with the hide still on them. You know, uh, probably for the dollar I could. You know, that, not now, but, you know, then and I'm like, I don't need them that bad, you know. Um, you know, because there's a, there's a I, I pay as much as I can, you know. Um, so, but, you know, there's lots of markets out there, uh, you know, and but the beaver looks really good. Uh, if you can sell the carcasses and get, uh, you know, per pound price uh, on the carcass or, you know, sell it for, you know, three, four bucks, um, you know, when you got 50 of them, it's an extra 150 bucks. You know, if you, you know, with the, with the rats, you know, buck a piece extra. You ain't got to do nothing. You're just gonna, you know, use a few of them for mink bait and then throw them away. You know, I mean, it's you know, pretty good money, I think. 
you know, and uh, so, you know, there are, is markets out there, the coyote market, you know, I mean, uh, it's not, not great. Um, you know, it's like with the gray fox, it seemed like some, some places sold gray fox really well. Um, other place, you know, and then other markets weren't that great. So, um, you know, I've seen some gray fox go for 15 to 25 bucks, same way with reds. And I've seen other sales like out Pennsylvania, I think it was, uh, was like five, six bucks. So, um, you know, I mean, you're going to have different fur quality and stuff, but you know, if you, you know, uh, the fur crafters, it's like a uh, New York sale out there at, uh, you know, Cat County sale, um, and at, uh, the Herkimer sale. And then I can't remember the name, honey ho. Anyways, out to New York, um, you know, you got, uh, lots of crafters that show up. And the thing is, is, you know, if you can go to one of the sale like that, where the crafters are, you're going to get more money for oddball stuff. Not a lot of gray fox out to, uh, New York. Some gray fox show up there and the crafters drool all over them and they're going to buy them and, you know, you're going to make out good. You know, you, uh, you know, show up at a sale in Iowa with, you know, uh, raccoons. There's a lot of raccoons there. The crafters, you know, if they, there's any crafters at their sales, uh, you know, they got a lot of pick. You know, you show up with uh, some fishers, you know, different in a sale in Iowa to sell you know, that you, you know, caught, um, or pine martens, better chance that you're going to make out real good. Um, you know, so, you know, I mean, it, it, it's what you have and what the market is. But the thing is, you know, you see the sales of, you know, different stuff. That was only the, what the market was that day. It, it you know, uh, people see, you know, that, let's say that uh, Beaver averaged 40 some dollars or whatever it was at the Arkansas sale. The thing is, is I sold beaver, uh, like, I don't know, 10 days before that, got nine bucks nose count uh, on some skinned, some not skinned with the casters cut out of them. And, um, you know, uh, and I got a $9 nose count and, and was thrilled. You know, um, you know, two weeks later, they had that sale. If I would have went to them same buyers, after that, away from that sale, probably back to a nine dollar nose count. You know, um, so it, when they ha you see this stuff from the sale, it's only that day that that's what the market was at that particular spot. And um, you know, no, nothing. You know, nothing's guaranteed. You know, for over extended period of time. So, you know, it's important to pick the time when you're selling. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're wrong. I was right and wrong. I was the, 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 you know, $9 was really, was awesome. Nose count for stretch or, uh, you know, beaver in the carcass with the casters cut out of them. You know, that was an awesome price to me. If, if I'd have had more, I'd have sold him more, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, I mean, do I wish I would have been at the Arkansas sale? Absolutely. Cause, uh, 40 some dollar average is a hell of a lot better than nine. But, like I said, I was thrilled to get the nine. Um, but, you know, there's markets out there for that stuff. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, like with beaver, muskrats, um, you know, I mean, you know, you can sell all that stuff. And it's, uh, you know, you can, so there's something you can target to help pay for your expenses and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, beaver prices, you know, you start averaging you know, above $20, that's, that's uh, for a grease beaver, that's pretty good. You know, especially you get to keep the carcass, the caster, all that stuff. So, um, if, uh, you know, then there's, you know, lots of fur buyers running around buying beaver and, uh, I don't, you won't have no problem getting rid of them. And it, you know, I had a buddy the other day I talked to uh, down in Georgia, and he said, uh, you guys are, you know, it's awesome for you guys getting, you know, that prices on them beaver up there. I'm like, uh, yeah, that's not just northern beaver. That is hatter market. Um, you know, I mean, is ours going to weigh a little bit more when they weigh them? Because uh, with the hatter market, it's by the uh, dollar, you know, a dollar amount by the pound, um, you know, 
you know, today would be $7 a pound. If your beaver weighed a pound and a half uh, and they're paying $10, you would get $15 for that beaver. You know, so, you know, it's per pound um, on the hatter market. And it doesn't matter if you're in Georgia, Louisiana, um, you know, the way I understand it, it doesn't matter if they're summertime beaver or wintertime beaver. You know, I mean, yeah, they'll weigh more in the winter than they're going to in the summertime, but they don't care. You know, that's from what I understand. Um, so, like I say, everybody always is doom and gloom. I'm, uh, you know, not everybody. Um, some people online are doom and gloom. But, see, I, I've been through all this many, many times. And, you know, it's like people talk about the, the fur boom in the 70s and 80s. F fine. You know, there was, a, and then they'll talk about, like, 2012, 13. You know, like that would just happen. You know, there was lots of uh, times that the market spiked on certain items and it went high. I mean, was 2012, 2013 awesome? Yeah, it was. It was flat awesome. Um, you know, but, you know, uh, a lot of market peak, uh, high market items went from, you know, 1987 when the market crashed and the price uh, dropped up to 2012, 13. It, the thing is, is that there was lots of where it went, the market went up, not on all items, but where you could go out and capitalize on certain species and make out, make out good. And we might not all trap for the money, but there is a, a definite link between money and trapping as far as getting, um, I wouldn't say necessarily new people, but, you know, getting some uh, people out there in the numbers uh, at conventions and to support the associations and stuff like that. There's a definite link between the two. Um, so, you know, but like in 1997, I think it was, I mean, uh, you know, we, I, I averaged uh, $17 on Coon. You know, I mean, you know, you don't hear anybody talking about 1997 in the Coon market. But, you know, um, you could, you know, I average $17. That's, that's better than I average this year. Um, so, you know, it all, you know, if you take it all in perspective, the thing is, is there's going to be peaks and valleys. And with each species, mink valleys seem to be a lot lo longer than other species. But, you know, it's like people saying, well, the coon market's never coming back. Well, you know what? They said that on the beaver two years ago, you know, and look where we're at now. It just takes one turn and, you know, you're back on top again. So, you know, I, I, and, 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 I, and I, in full transparency, I uh, am a glass half full person um, for the most part. Um, and, you know, I'm like got the gold miner mentality. You know, I just keep, you know, doing my pans of gold looking for that big nugget uh, and that next pan is going to have the big nugget and uh, you know so but uh you know that's the you know the, the way I, I have to be doing this stuff um you know because i really and i really do believe that i do believe the next year the coon price will come back i mean we averaged um nine dollars on raccoons this year you know i mean we went out and searched and found a market and had good raccoons you know they were iowa raccoons and they were put up um you know um and we still have 250 in the freezer um, that we didn't have time to put up because we were off running around getting other stuff. I'm still putting up otter. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I, right now, you know, I probably could sell the, uh, the otter for $35. You know, um, is that great? Nope. Uh, back in, the, you know, in the, you know, like in the 80s and 90s, you know, eh, probably not the 90s, but the, in the in the 80s for sure, uh, uh, otter was a $50 bill. If I caught one, I figured I could get 50 bucks out of it for sure. You know, um, you know, and then, then they went up to, you know, where I seen, uh, when F and T used to buy fur, my dad was there and, um, uh, uh, Ralph offered one guy $250 for an otter, you know, and the guy called him a crook, you know? So <laughs> I mean, I wonder what he, if he take 25 bucks for his otter now. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, the thing is, um, if you want to make a few bucks and be able to sell the stuff, you know, I mean, Beaver would be a good one to chase after this next year. 
Um, you know, there's quite a few around throughout the country because of, uh, you know, no, nobody had really been trapping them because the price was so bad on them. I mean, the last year we, or the, this year we sold, the worst we sold was $9 in the carcass. Um, you know, we sold them to Perry Fur down there. Him and his son stopped, helped us out. I mean, just awesome people. Um, you know, I couldn't say nice, enough nice things about Perry Fur Company down in Louisiana. I mean, most everybody down in Louisiana that, that traps and stuff and has anything to do with that has always been awesome. But, uh, you know, uh, Perry is really good. And, um, you know, um, you know, but the year before that, um, you know, we got, you know, $6 in the grease. You know, so, you know, that's why I say that next year, I mean, coon prices could come up. I mean, it might be the year after, it might be five years. I don't know. Nobody does. But they sh sure as hell don't know that it's going to be in the toilet for five years. So anybody says they do, you know, you should start playing the stock market because you're, you're in the wrong game if you're that, that highly intelligent to be able to figure all that out. You know, and the, and the fur buyers are the same way. They can't figure it out either because the thing is, is uh, they would have been out pumping on the beaver and having piles of them um, way ahead of time if they would have known that the, it was going to go, you know, high like it is. Because if they can buy one for 10 and sell it for, say, 24, 14 bucks is a lot better than working on two or three. So, but, you know, a lot of the stuff, uh, the guy, you know, guys and ladies, uh, you know, they uh, aren't doing it for the money. But it's certainly nice to be able to get a return, you know, at least something. You know, at least, you know, uh, use them and not uh, just have to, you know, throw them away. So, well, um, I guess uh, we're going to end there. Um, I got a couple ideas for next week's show. Um, and that should be pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to try and have an interview lined up with a really cool guest. And uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks for, uh, you know, tuning in and uh, listening. And, you know, this is the first show I've ever done, you know, uh, me talking for an hour. Uh, I kept the swearing to a, a minimum, um, which, uh, you know, might not always work, but it, it worked tonight. So, um, but I appreciate you all tuning in. And, uh, you know, like I say, uh, uh, I'm open to any of your ideas as far as, um, you know, uh, things to do for the show. So, the other thing I, I wanted to say real quick, uh, I said on a live on Facebook the other night, um, if you come to a show, if you want to go to a trapping convention, but you don't have nobody to go with, um, and you think, well, I'll get there, and I won't have anybody to, you know, hang out with or whatever, you know, during the day we're working the booth and, you know, uh, talking to people there, and you're free to stop by there, and you don't have to spend money, just stop by and talk and stuff, so, um, but afterwards, we, we, we're spent, last year we stayed, um, except for the Nationals, uh, at the, right at the, we stayed at the, uh, campgrounds or the fairgrounds every, every show. And, uh, we're doing that. We didn't even book no motels this year. We're staying right at the shows. Um, so if you're going there and you don't have any, any friends to go with and you're worried about that, you know, um, you just f find out where we're camping. We're going to have a fire going. Um, and the thing is, is, um, you you can come on, hang out with us at our fire. Um, we can talk trapping, um, we can talk, uh, you know, whatever you want to talk, you know, just, we'll, we'll all be a big group there, you know, I mean, uh, I'll be there, Sarah will be there, Virts is that some of them will be there, Haggerty will be there, Nick Ernie will be at some of them, you know, so, um, and lots of other people, so, you know, like I say, if you want to come to a convention, ain't got nobody to hang out with, Come hang out at our camp. You'll meet lots of friends, uh, and you know, um, you know, we might not know who you are, but once you come there, you know, you'll you'll just be one of the trappers. So, 
anyways, uh, you know, I just want to throw that out there that everybody's welcome to come hang out at our fire. Uh, if you're coming there and don't have a chair, I would bring one because the chairs go quick. Because we only got about six of them and they go quick. And I, I'm really quick at grabbing one. And I will grab it away from you. If you try to get in it, I'll be there first. So, anyways, thanks everybody for listening this week. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I get better and better at doing this. So, <laughs> see you everybody. Bye.